coronavirus index, week eight, second guessing the death toll from Axios.com. Do you believe the number of Americans dying from COVID-19 is more, less, or about the same as the reported number? Now, there have been some fear mongers who have done such a good job outside of government that they've convinced a handful of people that the uh, numbers are actually more. So most Americans say they doubt the U.S. death count, but whether they think it's higher or lower depends on whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Of course, they've got that breakdown, independence here in the middle. Thank you for that graphic, CJ. Total, how many of them think it's more? 44%. Now, I have seen some of the sort of conspiracy fear-mongering statements like this online on social media from people saying, they're not telling us how bad it really is. Government always downplays things. There's way more deaths out there. Way more people are dying. Hospitals are overrun. Look at all the deaths. Look at the look at the morgues. And it's like, no, it's not real. That's not a thing. And I wonder, is this part of the deliberate misinformation campaign that is being conducted around the coronaphobia crisis? There's a lot of money in this to be made from the uncertainty and the doubt. Why not make sure that that counter narrative is there? If there is a minor crisis and you're grossly exaggerating the numbers, why not make people think you're underestimating the numbers so that your numbers are more seen as the middle ground? Well, that's what's happening here. 44% of Americans think it's more. 32% think it's about the same. Only 23% of us who are looking at things rationally, who don't believe the hype and the propaganda and the fear porn, understand that the deaths are being greatly exaggerated. The death rate especially is being exaggerated because the number of confirmed cases is actually being grossly underreported. Why it matters. This may be the most jarring evidence to date about just how deeply partisanship has infected our collective ability to trust institutional sources and agree on science and facts. Trust in government is abstract, but death counts are real. (laughs) Not anymore, they're not. We'll see that in the numbers, as Ron Paul has pointed out. There will be a dip in pneumonia-related deaths as we see this sudden spike of corona-related deaths. Back to the numbers, CJ, if you would, for this graphic. The difference here, if you live in a Democrat-controlled area, you might be facing a population that thinks the government isn't doing enough. Among Democrats, 63% think it's more. 29, about the same. Only 7% of Democrats think that it's less. And I'd like to read into that and extrapolate that they actually understand what's going on, those 7%. But you could live in a part of America easily where 90 plus percent think that the, the death count is right on or that it's too low and government's not doing enough. That's a scary possibility. This is, you know, we've talked for a long time about the zombie apocalypse. You know, just the other day I had to show someone my how to survive the coming zombie apocalypse with my semi-automatic Sega 10 shotgun video taking out boom, 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 all these water jugs, a lot of, it's a fun video. <laughs> This is the zombie apocalypse. Now, it is the most boring apocalypse ever, and I do still believe that it is coming to an end. But yes, they have successfully turned all of these people into zombies. And among Republicans, I just want to point this out. Like, while, you know, independence, the total, so total of who think it's about the same or more, I guess it'd be easier to give the single number of, in these categories, who think it's, who thinks it's less. This is the most number of woke folks in the category. And Democrats, 7%. Independents, 24%. Republicans, 40%. 
can't deny giving credit where it's due here that Republicans are generally more woke at the present moment about this shit than even independent. Death counts are real. People whose primary news source is the Fox News Channel are most likely to say that the deaths attributed to coronavirus are inflated. Trust in state governments dropped the most in Florida, Georgia, and Texas, where governors pushed fast reopenings in out ice in California, New York, and New Jersey, where governors resisted. Now, correlation not being causation, of course. What they're saying, how people are actually processing information and assigning credibility to it is 100% partisan, says Cliff Young, president of Ipsos U.S. Public Affairs. 47%, CJ, if you go up to this by the number section, 47% say they've canceled summer plans, such as camp or a vacation rental. 58% say they're concerned that schools won't reopen in the fall. 63% say they're concerned about food shortages in the next month, which are finally actually here. Up until now, it was more of a money shortage, people not being able to afford groceries. Now with the Wendy's store today, Wendy's restaurants not able to get enough beef for their burgers. Where's the beef, right? One in five people say they've donated in the last month to charities providing food to those in need. One in 10 donated to charities helping hospitals or health workers. 26% said they visited friends or relatives in the last week, an increase for the second week in a row. And this goes to our story about the data from Apple showing that people aren't really buying the lockdowns and the shutdowns. Activity is creeping back to normal. Social distancing may break down first, not among people rushing back to stores or the office, but those deciding to meet relatives and friends again. Another great silver lining here, people appreciating what really matters and doing it in person versus doing it virtually. The biggest silver lining, I think, and I do believe in the long run, there is going to be a great positive shift in the consciousness and awareness, because as I've had with the conversations with my family, realize that a number of us are not as skeptical as some of us uh, my father and i and incidentally him while he is truly libertarian certainly have a more conservative mindset and having come from the republican side of things well not he's never really active with the republican party i don't want to smear him like yeah. that, that bad but no my father has been uh very skeptical and yet, due to the expectations of people around him, decided not to come to our wedding this past weekend. And it's kind of forced us to have this conversation. I wonder if in a month or two, a lot of the people who we invited to the wedding this past weekend are going to say, shit, you were right. We should have gone. People were traveling during that time. There are people traveling. Airlines are flying. Despite, I think, being an unscientific opinion here, but one of the most dangerous uh, vectors for transmission of such a disease. Airlines, recirculated air, people sitting packed in, no shit. And by the way, we saw in headlines today, airlines are offering empty middle seats next to you for a premium of $39 on your ticket. There's so many empty seats anyway. Right. But yeah, why not? Why not? I'm going to give it another 39 bucks guarantee that you will only brush up against people in the aisle and while collecting bags and while waiting to get on the plane and and going to the bathroom at the airport and touching all these collective shared, so yeah, okay. Practice good basic hygiene at all times, before and after coronaphobia. Uh, this conversation that we're being forced to have right now where skeptics are talking to non-skeptics is really positive and valuable for the long-term progress of humanity.